Hi, welcome to The Michael Young Show, where we talk about everything San Francisco real estate. Today, we're going to go over the basics of putting together a competitive bid. San Francisco is one of the most competitive real estate markets in the nation. So if you want to buy in San Francisco, you want to make sure that your bid stands out. And we're going to go over today the eight elements of a competitive bid. In summary, they are price, financing profile, inspection, appraisal, and loan contingency, day's escrow close, your personal statement, and my particular negotiating strategy to set you apart from your competition. Now let's talk about price. Higher the better, that's a no-brainer. That being said, highest price does not always win because there are other elements that are important to the seller. Secondly, is financing profile. Obviously an all cash offer is better than a financed offer. And if it's, if it's financed, 50% down payment is better than 20% down payment is better than 5% down payment. Now, that being said, all cash offers don't always win in San Francisco because there are other elements that are important. Now, the next three are inspection, appraisal, and loan contingency. When you make an offer on the house and the seller accepts, let's say in this case it's a million dollar home, you have to put down a customary 3% initial deposit, which in this case would be $30,000. So, you're in contract, you want to make sure that your million dollar investment is a sound investment. You notice that there wasn't a home inspection done when you made the bid. What do you do? You've got, for instance in this case, a seven day inspection contingency. You bring in your own, your own home inspector, they go out, inspect the property, find something that you don't like. You can say, oh, I have a seven day inspection contingency in place, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller. I don't like what they found during the inspection. I want to take my 3% deposit back cancel the contract, walk away, no harm done. And that's perfectly fine if you have an inspection contingency in place. Now, if you're financed, you're getting funding from a bank to buy the home, there's the appraisal contingency. In this case, it's a million dollar home. Before the bank can lend to you, the bank has to certify the property is actually worth a million dollars. They'll send their appraiser out to appraise the property, and what if the appraiser comes back and says, it's only worth $800,000? Well, that extra $200,000 has to come out of your pocket. But if you have an appraisal contingency in place, you can tell the seller, the property didn't appraise and I don't have the funds to make up the difference. I can take my deposit back, cancel the contract, walk away, no harm done. That's the appraisal contingency. The loan contingency works much the same way. During escrow, the bank has to underwrite you. But during that time, anything could happen. Your credit change, the economy tanks, you never know. The bank may come back to you and say, I can't underwrite you for this loan. There's no financing available for you to purchase that home. What do you do? If you have a loan contingency in place, you can say, oh, no problem. I'm gonna take my deposit back, cancel the contract, walk away, no harm done. So those three contingencies are in place to protect you. That being said, this is one of the most competitive real estate markets in the nation. Bidders here are aggressive, and a lot of them will waive all three contingencies. Why? Because they want to tell the seller, I want this house so much, I'm going to waive all three contingencies, accept all the risk, and it's on me to make sure that I'm going to close this deal. So just keep that in mind when it comes to the contingencies. Now, what is number six? That's day's escrow close. What is escrow? You make a bid on a house, they accept it. Well, before you close the deal, there's a lot of paperwork. You've got to figure out taxes, you've got to do review the title, you've got to make sure the insurance, the taxes, the interest, the principal's all calculated. It takes a while to do. Standard in California is 30 days. In San Francisco, I've seen escrow close in five days, okay? So the shorter that you can make that escrow, the better it is because it's less risk for the seller. If it's a 35-day escrow, anything could happen during those 35 days, the deal could fall through. If it's only five days, then the seller knows, oh, I only have to wait five days for this thing to close and I'll get my money. I want the fast escrow close. So keep that in mind, okay? Now the next one, personal statement. That can set you apart. When you bid, other bidders, let's say for instance, come in at the same price with the same terms. How are you gonna stand out? Introduce yourself. Tell the seller a little bit about you and why the property is important to you. Now remember, some of these sellers have been in their homes for 20 years. They want to make sure the new person coming in is going to take care of their home as well. 
Maybe you're a newlywed couple wanting to begin their new life in San Francisco. Maybe you're a native San Franciscan who wants to finally own their own property in San Francisco. Maybe you're a military veteran who's come back from overseas and you want to make San Francisco your home. Those things can make you stand out and it's important for sellers to know. So I highly recommend buyers write personal statements when they bid. Now, last but not least is my particular negotiating strategy that can help set you apart. Unfortunately, I can't go over that today on the internet because if it got out, then I would lose my edge to put you apart from the other bidders. If you want to find out what my particular negotiating strategy is, call me, email me, come to my office, and I'll be happy to walk you through how to put together the most competitive bid possible to set you apart from those other bidders. So that in a nutshell is how to put together a competitive bid. With that, Thank you for watching and I look forward to talking to you next time.